Well, hello folks, this is Jamil Swift for Gunstock Reviews. We're here at Caltown, USA in Peoria, Arizona with Scott Folk from Apex Tactical. And we're gonna talk about the new triggered uh, installation for the Hellcat, Springfield Armory Hellcat. Now, Scott, you told us in a previous video that it was really simple to install. Now, is it really that simple? Uh, it's extremely simple. Uh, there's three components to the kit. There's the trigger body, which is pre-assembled with the safety. Uh, there's a sear spring and a striker spring. Installation takes about 15, 20 minutes for most people. Uh, very straightforward. And we have videos walking you through how to install it. Come back with me to the Apex Studio and I'll walk you through it. Tools you'll need for this installation are a 16th inch pin punch, a 3 seconds pin punch, a small hammer somewhere around the six to eight ounce range, and a roll of tape would be handy, but it's not absolutely necessary. This kit contains a striker spring, a sear spring, and the action enhancement trigger. Following the factory field stripping recommendations, I'm gonna take the pistol, I'm gonna push out the sear housing pin first. That one should pop right through. This is the locking block pin, which is a little more difficult. Make sure that guy comes all the way out. And then the trigger pivot pin. Same thing with this guy, just push it. There's a little bit of spring tension. Push all the way through, pop it out the other side. Now I have all the pins out, ready to disassemble. With the pins removed from the frame, first I'm gonna take out my locking block. I'm gonna pull up on it and just wiggle it up just a little bit. That should allow me to take the takedown lever all the way out, kind of twist it around and pull it out. Whole thing will come out in one shot. Once in there, I can pull the spring off and the takedown lever, and then I can remove the back section as well. Next, I'll, I'll need to remove the slide lock lever. I'll just pull that guy up and set it aside. Next, I'll grab the sear housing. I'm gonna kind of push it forward and I'll be able to pull it up and out. And then my magazine blocking lever will come out of the frame as well. I need to remove the trigger bar from the sear housing. The sear is still under tension, so what I need to do is I need to grab the trigger bar, pull it up and forward, and I need to kind of wiggle it out like so to remove sear tension. Once it gets halfway out, I can kind of pop it out, and now I've got it free of the sear assembly. Now that I have the sear assembly completely disassembled from the trigger bar, I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna look at the bottom. You'll notice that the pin here has a little ring on it that engages the spring. Now that I have the sear detentioned, I can push that pin all the way out, and then I can drop the sear out of the housing to take the spring off. Now that we have the sear and the sear spring out of the housing, we need to remove the sear spring from the sear itself. Notice the split in the bottom of the spring that's closest to the sear itself. We need to roll that around and use that as our gap to disassemble it. You'll have to reassemble in this orientation and we'll get to that in a minute. What I do is I wrap it around the back, I put my pin punch in and I'll just basically pull, oh, there she goes, and remove it from the sear. Next, we need to remove the trigger bar from the trigger body. I'll use my 16th inch pin punch and put it in the hole on top of the pin that's closest to the hole for the trigger pivot pin. That's the pin that holds the trigger bar in place. I'll tap that through about halfway. That's normally enough, if I pull my pin out, that's normally enough to get the bar out. You don't have to pull the pin all the way through, so I typically push it that far, and then I leave it like that. At this point, your frame is disassembled and ready for installation of the Apex components. I wanna give you a quick side-by-side -side of the factory components versus the Apex. You'll notice that the striker springs are very similar. If you mix them up, the Apex striker spring is slightly longer than the factory component. The sear spring is pretty obvious. Theirs is a straight cylindrical coil. Ours has a bit of a hourglass shape to it. And of course, the trigger body is pretty obvious. To install my trigger bar into my trigger body, I need to align the trigger bar into the hole for the trigger pivot pin. Now, what I have to do is I'll take a piece of business card. This is just one of our cards, but this is the same material as it comes with your product card. So take a little strip off, maybe a quarter inch or a little narrower. I put it on top of the trigger bar. I'll slide this into the trigger body and that kind of wedges it in and that gives me a chance, if I should pull it out of the way here, gives me a chance to visually align the trigger bar hole with the hole in the body and because of the friction, it stays put so I can put it in the vise. Now that I have my spacer and the trigger bar into the trigger, I just need to reconfirm the alignment of my trigger bar into the hole to make sure it's just right. So as soon as I don't see any more metal in there, I'm in just the right location and I can go from there. It's a slight misalignment, won't hurt anything, but I do want to get it as close as possible. So I can see a little bit of the card in that far side, but that's perfectly aligned. Now what I'll do is I'll take a piece of business card I already folded over. I just use this as a, as a vice uh, paper to prevent damage to the trigger. I'll put the smooth face of the trigger body against that paper and I'll hold the trigger bar here and I'll slowly close the vice jaw until the pin makes contact. Now all I have to do is crank the vice slowly and carefully. You'll hear it kind of pop sometimes as it starts. Well, this one didn't pop, but that's okay. I'm going to just wiggle the bar. Now at this point, since I've moved it, I've actually dis disaligned the bar. So I'm going to pull it back out and just take a look. I'm going to reconfirm my alignment is still good on the trigger bar pin. 
put this guy back in the vise, and I'll squeeze it down. And I can feel it kind of capture in here. And then once it's there, I can feel it wiggle around. I know it's on the pin. I'll go all the way down to that pin touches the side. Now I'll back it off and I should have my pin just barely above flush. On the opposite side, it's just barely below. It could be used in this position or if you really want to get perfect with it, turn it over, put your vice, your paper on the vice anvil and just tap that guy flat with a flat pin punch. I'm going to give a quick explanation of why this is such a critical process. If I don't wedge the piece of paper in here, I can crush the trigger body and we don't want to do that. It can also cause the safety to stick. So we have to be very cautious about this. Take your time and whatever you do, don't put the trigger pivot pin through the trigger bar itself. If you misalign it, you can do some damage. So take your time, little turns at a time on the vise to get it just perfectly into position. Once I have the trigger and bar assembled, I want to remove the shim. And you'll notice that it fall, freely falls around the pin. And this is exactly what we're looking for. The other thing I want to do is check the safety. So I'll hold the trigger body and just flick the safety a little bit and make sure it's popping up in and out on its own. That's what we're looking for to make sure we didn't crush the trigger body. I want to point out something really quick before we assemble the sear and sear spring together. You'll notice our spring has a gap on it just like the factory does. We're going to assemble that on the sear. Remember, this is the top end of the sear. We want that gap to be down when it's installed, but that spring has to be around the back side of the sear when we do so. So when I go to install this guy, what it's going to look like is I'm going to hook it on the front, roll it around the back, and in the installed position, that little gap down there is going to be facing downward, and that's the proper orientation we want to be in. Since we have it disassembled, I want to do a little bit of lubrication since we're in here. What I'll do is I'll pick up the sear, and if you notice, you'll see a little felt core on the inside. That's supposed to be there. Please don't remove it. Take a little bit of oil, and I'll put oil on the end of that piece of felt, and just a drop or two, just till the felt basically turns the color of your lubricant. That's all it needs. You probably never need to re-lubricate it after this, but this extends spring life drastically, so add a drop or two of oil to that when you, when you install it, and everything is good to go. So you can see the red marks on the sear. I put red ink on the spots that you need to lubricate on the sear when you reassemble it. The idea is that you can see where the lube's supposed to go without it being, and keep it very obvious. So on both sides where it rubs in the housing, and on the top section where it contacts the striker. The rest can be left unlubricated. There's gonna be enough lube floating around your gun. It's not gonna be a problem not to have extra lube on those parts. Now I need to install the sear into the sear housing. You'll notice the sear is in the proper orientation for installation. The slot for the trigger bar on the side is up where the slot on the sear housing is. The high side of the sear is at the back of the frame. So we need to basically install it inside there, but I need to connect the sear spring to the pin that goes through the hole back here first. So what I'll do, I'll rotate the sear around in the sear housing, and I'll basically set that pin and the spring in position. I'll use the little pin here, and I'll capture that spring with it. Once I'm in position, now I can grab the sear, I can hold the pin on the sides under tension, and I can roll the sear itself into the sear housing and in position so now I can see the hole through the sear housing. When I flip this guy over, the slot for the trigger bar is roughly lined up. Now I can put the trigger bar in. Proper lubrication is key, so before you reassemble your trigger bar, make sure you lubricate it. You can see again I have the red marker here on the side, as well as on the disconnect surface on the back of the trigger bar. Just put some grease or oil on those too, that makes a big difference. One thing to note is the pin that holds the sear in tends to want to fall through. So what I did is I just took a piece of tape here, and I'm going to basically put that pin back into its final position. I'll put a piece of tape on the back side and wrap it around to the front side just to hold it in place. Once we get the trigger bar in, then we'll take that tape off and we can reassemble it. Do not leave this tape on when you put it back in the frame. It'll cause problems. To install the trigger bar, we have to capture the sear itself. So you'll notice inside I've got the sear, and the sear is under spring tension. So what I do, I'll use my trigger bar to capture that sear spring, sear itself, push in and kind of pull it forward to go all the way down and capture. In this case, it kind of rotated. So I'm holding my thumb on top, pushing and holding on the sear on the bottom, pushing the sear forward, kind of under, against spring force. I'll put the trigger bar in, try to capture that guy, pull it forward and seat it into the sear. Oh, there we go. You know you've got it when your sear is all the way, your trigger bar is all the way down against the sear housing right there. Before I put the sear housing back in, I want to show you something. If you use the tape method that I showed you, remove the tape. Don't forget that part. If you look down here on the pin, it's got a little annular ring that locks in to the spring itself. What I'll do is I'll move the spring over till it kind of clicks into position. If it doesn't click, I'm just going to move the pin. There we go. And make sure the spring seats on that. Once that's there, it's not going anywhere. Now, this, now the tape is no longer necessary and this can go into the frame.
If you didn't lubricate the spring the first time around, now's a good time to do it. You just put a drop right here on the outside, it'll soak into the coils, and you're good to go. But not absolutely necessary if you did it in the first place. Before I install anything else in the frame, I have to put the magazine blocking lever back in. The flat face that's got kind of the two wedges on it goes toward the magazine, and it sits in the right side of the frame in its little notch. I push it about most of the way back toward its stroke to put the trigger system in. Now I'll take the trigger. I'll put the trigger body into the mortise first. Avoid hitting that blocker if you can. And I'll drop the sear housing down. Make sure the little notches back here in the sear housing capture into the frame. And that guy sits all the way down and we're in position. Once the sear housing is reinstalled and the trigger's in place, I want to make sure the magazine blocker is in place. So I'm just going to move it back and forth. And it's got a little slot it sits in, so it doesn't have to go very far. Just make sure it's in position because that will affect things later. Now I'm going to put back in the locking block and the slide lock lever. So first thing I'll do is I'll take the slide lock lever spring, put that back on the slide lock. The little tab here on the bottom will sit into the notch, into the hole on the locking block. Once I'm there, I'll raise the frame up. I'll take my slide lock lever, put the hole forward, drop it down, and you can see it sits in a little notch in the frame. Once that's in position, I'll take my locking block with the spring on it, and I'll drop that guy down into the frame. You'll notice there's a pair of notches right up here at the front of the frame that slides into. Once I start it, it should go all the way down and the holes should align and I'm in the right position. I want to go over and confirm where the pins go in the frame before we get back to reinstallation. Obviously, the larger pin is the trigger body pivot pin. The, other, the next pin down has two annular rings in it and only two rings. That is your locking block pin. And the pin with the three rings is the pin for your sear housing block. Keep that in mind when you install these because you could mix these two up. We're going to start with the trigger pivot pin, the larger of the two pins. It doesn't matter which side it goes in, doesn't matter which way it goes in. I prefer to start from the right side of the frame and go left because I capture the trigger body itself. And as I push through, I have to flip the frame over and I have to capture the slide lock lever around that pin. And so I have to move it maybe up and down and move it around under spring tension until it just locks up. There it is. Until it finds its, its position. From here, I can push down on the table and it'll lock it in. Now I can put the next pin in. I'll take the pin with the two annular rings. This is your locking block pin. And I again will start from the right to the left. It makes it a little easier. There's a retaining pin that locks into this notch that we're going to use. So we start from the right side. It goes all the way down. And it overtakes that pin, that spring, and pushes it in. In this case, I'm a little above flush. I'll take my hammer and get a little tap. Make sure I'm below. I'm not quite there. So I'll use my pin punch. And I'll just push it over. And now I'm roughly flush on both sides. Next pin I'll do, I'll hold the sear housing down with my thumb, take the sear housing pin, again, any direction from any side. I'll put it in the frame, push it down. I'll use my pin punch to press it into position. Double check the other side. I'm a little low, so I'll just kind of push it back here. And we're in position. Now all I have to do is put my takedown lever back in. The final step in frame assembly is going to be reinstalling the takedown lever. You'll notice the end of the takedown lever has kind of a a half circle cut on it. That's intended to actually uh, overtake that spring that interrupts the hole right there at the back. So what I'll do is I'll put it in where it's facing forward. I'll rotate it upward and I'll push it in and it should pop past that spring for us to work with. Once it's past there, I'll align it with the opposite side of this here housing or the, the locking block inside there. And again, I'll roll it up and it should pop itself right back in the frame, like so. Once it's there, I can roll it down and then back up, and I know I'm in the right position, and now we can put the slide back on. Now that we have the frame reassembled, we're going to do a function check. What I need to do, first of all, is take my takedown lever and put it in the forward firing position to make sure everything is as it would normally be fired. Next, what I'll do is I'll put my finger on the trigger, and I'll hold it down. I'll go to the disconnector over here with my pin punch, and I'll press that. That goes in. The sear pops up into the reset position, the capture position to, to capture the striker. From here, I'll, put, I'll hold my trigger, finger on the trigger and I will press the trigger bar forward slightly until that disconnector pops back out back here. I'll do it again. Trigger down, disconnect, sear pops up, trigger bar forward, disconnector pops back out. When I pull the trigger, the sear pops back down again. This is proper function. We need to make sure the sear is moving down. When the disconnector gets pushed in, the sear pops up, like so. And then when I press forward on the trigger bar, the sear resets and is able to fire again. To replace the striker spring, you first have to remove the back plate from the slide. So what I'll do is I'll use my pin punch and push on the little rectangular block at the top here. 
I'll slide the back plate down just a little bit until it clears. And then I need to push the back plate off. Remember, your extractor tension comes off of this little guy here too. So you're gonna have both these guys wanting to pop up. So I put my thumb over the top and I expect it to hurt a little bit as they pop up, which it does. Back plate comes off. Now the two springs are, un are detensioned. I can take my finger and just pull the striker up and out. So I can now disassemble that and put the new spring on. Now I need to disassemble the striker. I have to pull off the two spring cups off the front. I'll use my roll of tape to support it. So I'll kind of hold the housing against the inside here. I'll pull the spring tension down and I'll pull the cups off. You need to wear glasses when you do this part. This is the most dangerous part because springs can come flying up. Relieve tension, pull that spring off, and now I can put the new one on. I want to remind you again the difference between the apex spring and the factory spring. The factory spring is slightly shorter than the apex spring. So when you go to install the kit, install the longer of the two springs, that's the apex spring. I'll take the apex striker spring, put it over the striker itself, and here's where I will compress it, hold it down, and I'll put on one half of the spring cups. You can pretty much put them on and then rotate it around once it's in position. I'll put on the other half, to made up to it. Uh, hard to see in here, but you get the idea. Hold them together and then gradually release spring tension to put them back. Now we're ready to reassemble it into the slide. Before we put the striker back in, I want to point out the extractor spring uh, retention cap on there. There's a little slot that the back plate of the slide has to go into. I want to angle that so it's not perfectly parallel. It's kind of kicked out just a little bit to capture the back plate as it goes in. So the orientation it's in now is just about right. It's angled just a bit. I'll take the striker itself. I'll put it into the slide. I'll press it down until it stops. From here, I'll take the back plate and I'll use this to press the striker in against spring tension and start to capture the uh, striker spring and the back slide. Now what I'll do, I'll write this so you can see it better, I'll push this guy down under tension, I'll push the back plate up and it went all the way in and we're fully seated. Now we're ready for a function check. Before we reassemble, we want to do a full function check. Remember, on every firearm you should do a function check before final assembly or shooting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press the striker forward, make sure that I do not protrude into the breech. I'll press the striker block in, push the striker forward and see that it is cleared. It is, it, the striker is protruding into the breech. I'll let the block up, pull the striker back, push forward again, and I've confirmed that my striker block is fully functional and my striker is floating as it's supposed to. This is proper function. Before I put the upper assembly back on the frame, I want to do some lubrication. I want to go over that. You'll notice on the locking block on the rails, there's some white already. That's metal on metal burnishing. We need lubrication there. Same thing on the back rails, on the disconnector itself, and on top of the sear. Now we've already lubricated the top of the sear per prior in this video, but oh, again, I want to cover that section as well. So here's what I'll do. I'll take a bit of oil and I'll put a drop on top of each rail. A little more on that one. What I'll do is I'll use my finger and I'll rub the lube away from the outside and kind of brush it back on. That'll capture lubricating the top, the outside, and it'll fall lube underneath. So same thing on the back side. I'll push the lube away, rub my finger back, and that'll cause the lube to fall around the outside. Same thing on this guy. You kind of have to move it in because there's not much space for that. Same thing over here. Now we've got lubricated frame rails. If you can see it glistening, it's lubricated. If you can't, it's not. On top of the sear itself, I'll just put a little drop here, again, like we talked about doing earlier. And then on the locking block itself, right here, this is your lockup surface for your barrel. I put a drop on that guy right near the front so you can see a little bit of lube right there just to make sure it's got some lube. I'll do the same method. I'll put, push forward, I'll pull back to try to get the lubrication underneath. The surface underneath here is your unlocking surface. This is where your barrel hits under recoil and you want lubrication in there to prevent a little bit of damage or to prevent any kind of galling. As you can see, I lubricated the frame rail, but I didn't actually get the disconnector itself. So I'll just come in here with my lube and I'll put a drop right over it. Make sure I've got some lubrication on that. That rides on the slide and that needs to be lubricated to maintain proper function. Lubricating the barrel is critical because it's a metal on metal contact for most of the slide to barrel contact points. So you'll notice the smiley face across the top of the barrel and across the bottom. This is normal. You're not, you're not going to have this uh, permanent and perfect every time. So just be aware you're going to get some wear on that, those surfaces. We're going to lubricate those. I'll put some oil on the top, a drop or so. I'll smear that around across the top, roughly half. Flip the barrel over and I'll do the same thing on the bottom, going almost all the way to the muzzle and just wipe the excess off the tip. That's where you need the most lubrication. As well as the unlocking surface down here needs to be lubricated. So I put some oil right there and make sure it gets underneath that locking surface. And that's all you need for barrel lubrication. With our slide and frame properly lubricated and reassembled, we're gonna do a final functions check.
First thing I'll do, check and make sure my gun is unloaded. Um, since I've done that, slide forward. I'm gonna check this trigger safety, make sure it springs out and back every time. I'll press on the trigger body, and I'll make sure that the trigger safety hits the frame and the gun does not fire. Now what I'll do is I'll put my finger on the trigger, I'll pull the safety, pull the trigger and fire. Hold the trigger down, cycle the slide, make sure it's all the way in battery, release, re-engage, dry fires again. One more check just to be certain, I'll release it, I'll let the safety out, press the body, make sure it doesn't fire, press the safety, and it dry fires. This is proper function. So Scott, what if I run to any problems? Uh, call customer service. All of our customer service reps are very well versed in the Hellcat disassembly, reassembly process. Uh, Jenna did the installation on your kit when we installed it. Um, but it's easy, straightforward, just call customer service, they'll help you with whatever issues you're having.